Um, I'm going to use the beautiful RISE system that uh, Russ has uh, introduced me to. <laughs> and if I run into trouble, <laughs> I will uh, blame him. <laughs> no, sorry, Russ. No, I will not blame you. Uh, I will, uh, but uh, I thought, I thought that, was a, that was a very nice system that uh, you can see uh, how we can move from uh, slides to uh, uh, to, um, uh, to notebooks uh, easily. Okay, so this is a, a very brief introduction to uh, the statistics in Python. Uh, really is a, a short introduction. I have way more, uh, probably way more too, mat too much material than I can cover, uh, but you know, this is something for you. I will just describe the material that I have and the material that is missing. Uh, and this is for you to uh, look at it if you uh, wish in the future. Uh, such a, uh, I think that's that some of it might be might be useful. So uh, it's uh, in part adapted from Gail's uh, SciPy lecture on the uh, uh, on stats and uh, uh, mod stats models. Uh, also, I, I put a little bit of uh, the FMI course we developed with uh, Matthew Brett, and uh, there are many other resources that I'm using uh, in this material that uh, I'm. Uh, I am uh, actually linking to, or uh, I can give you the links if, uh, if we need. So um, the uh, requirements um, uh, you are that uh, the standard requirements, and if you have cloned, if you have uh, pulled the, uh, the latest uh, uh, repository uh, that uh, I've uh, put you, you, uh, you probably have a requirement.txt, so it's called the uh, neurodata science uh, dash uh, stats uh, dash requirements.txt, so that you can actually now very easily recreate a virtual environment and have exactly the, the same virtual environment that I have at the moment. So uh, I'm not asking you to do it uh, unless you have uh, trouble uh, installing things, but in that requirements, in that uh, requirement, the text, you um, have all the, the things. So what you would could do is uh, just uh, pip install um, uh, dash r uh, space requirements, and then that's uh, something that uh, should uh, put all the requirements that you don't have yet uh, to, uh, to run and uh, the, this notebook. Um, sorry, the, uh, I will go uh, um, through, uh, uh, through, so that's the requirements, uh, standard, uh, scientific Python, NumPy, SciPy, MapperPip, Pandas, Stats Model, and Seaborn. Uh, and you've heard about Seaborn, we, you've heard a bit of a Pandas before, uh, so, you, uh, uh, so I'll go probably quickly on those things, but I want just to uh, wrap up and reiterate some of the messages. Um, there is a couple of uh, you know questions, statistical questions that are asked, and they uh, and they are about uh, gender. And I think uh, uh, the I think Gael uh, uh, suggested that, and uh, he says that uh, uh, the reason that we are looking at that is that such questions are uh, for you know having controlling the truth of, of a claim uh, is actually important uh, for many people. So what will this not cover? And uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, obviously in a in a in an hour or so we can't do uh, uh, too much. Uh, but what this will not cover is uh, first of all a very important topic, which is the Bayesian statistics in Python. Uh, uh, we'll refer uh, for that to the uh, PyMC uh, package. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, good resources. I will link more of those resources. There's a uh, um, uh, a very nice book on the, the introduction to Bayesian statistics uh, with uh, some uh, Python code that uh, um, I, I will put the reference in um, uh, in, in, uh, in the chat after the course. Um, the other thing that I'm not covering, which uh, I really wish uh, I could, um, and maybe that's some, some, some topic that uh, we could cover on the on Friday afternoon if uh, you are sufficiently interested and if you if enough of you are sufficiently interested, please put uh, that topic if you wish on the uh, uh, Friday new topics or you know documents that have uh, that we have uh, select. Uh, and that's uh, uh, that's the permutation testing and how do you uh, test uh, for significance using permutation uh, and that's a uh, uh, that's a very large topic. It's uh, it's not always an easy topic. It's a, uh, but it does uh, give you uh, in many many occasions uh, a significant testing that is uh, uh, that is uh, 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 likely to be more correct than the uh, than the parametric ones uh, when you uh, have uh, more assumptions, more stringent assumptions uh, behind the scene. It is surprisingly sometimes also uh, tricky. So I just uh, warn you that uh, not everything, um, uh, not every like uh, it's not because you're using permutation that uh, uh, you uh, you are going to have an easy time. Um, it, uh, in some settings that are a bit uh, uh, 
difficult or on, you know like uh, not easy uh, it's uh, it's something that uh, you know like uh, you want you want to uh, uh, think carefully about and exactly you have to carefully think okay what is the null that I'm going to try to to uh, estimate uh, with my data uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, permutation. There are some permutation testings in the many packages, and one of them is uh, Scikit-Learn. Uh, so uh, I also refer for to Scikit-Learn for permutation testing, and we'll have um, way more on Scikit-Learn uh, this afternoon. And I uh, think maybe Jake will uh, uh, touch on the, on the topic as well. And there's a lot of uh, uh, statistic books. I like the Think Stat statistics because it's uh, available as a PDF, but it's got also uh, Python code in it so that you can play with those things uh, and understand the statistics, not only by you know, reading formulas or reading text, but also like just uh, playing with the, uh, with the data and seeing what it does. And like, I think that's a, that's a very um, powerful way of uh, learning uh, statistics and uh, learning how to analyze data. It, it has to be a practical and uh, uh, and something that you, you, you're, you're getting your hand dirty. It's, it's never going to be enough to just read the books uh, and, uh, and understand the, uh, the formulas. That's not going to be enough. Although you do have to understand the formulas and uh, see what they represent. And one way of understanding them is actually to apply some data and uh, see what's going on uh, when you apply some data to those with uh, these formulas. Um, so, um, Data as a table. So, like, I think uh, uh, starting with the uh, with like a uh, pandas and the and the table aspect and the uh, like uh, may seem a bit okay. Uh, you know, these are not statistics; these are just a representation of data. And you know. uh, in machine learning, uh, you will hear often that uh, it's uh, eighty percent wrangling of the data, twenty percent of analysis. And I think it's about the same. And you know, in in statistics. Um, you know, in all classical statistics, whatever the data analysis that you're doing, uh, starting and handling the data is a way, way more, uh, way bigger uh, enterprise and, and, uh, and, and way more prone to errors and, and problems that, uh, you know, we usually uh, think about. We just uh, often in, in uh, the classical uh, sort of like uh, teaching of those things, there's uh, uh, way more emphasis emphasis on uh, the the stats and the and the test and uh, and you know, the procedures and uh, and all those things uh, and and not enough on uh, handling the data making sure that your uh, you know data are clean that you know you don't have uh, errors in reading and and so on so I'll touch on that again. Uh, you know, it has been uh, you know touched on. I think that's a common like a thread across this course, uh, and this uh, this is really important for uh, anything you will do. Uh, I have included in the uh, repo the uh, uh, brain uh, the text uh, uh, brain size the text uh, file, so you probably have that uh, ready. So I'll like that uh, just in case. This is the link again in the notebook. All right. Uh, if my uh, slides are permitting me to change. So this is the, the data in the CSV file. It looks like a, a simple uh, CSV. Uh, although, although, as you see, and we, we, we have used that data before, uh, you see that there's a semicolon rather than a column. So it's not really a CSV. It's not a column separated, <laughs> uh, but it's a semicolon separated. Maybe an SCSV, uh, but uh, you know this is this is just to show that how you you will find data in the various form and, and ways, and uh, and you have to be able to handle that easily. So the data, uh, the pandas data frame, obviously is uh, is you've seen that before. What is important is that the. Uh, 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 it uh, it is really different from a 2D NumPy array because uh, it ha handles different type of data uh, and also have an easy access uh, with the semantic, uh, which is something that uh, you know, like uh, I, I just want to point to that little experience. There are so many errors due to the fact that we are referring to data. Uh, as uh, like a column numbers or row numbers, uh, and then you have like, the uh, you know starting at zero, starting at one problems, and all those things. As much as you can in any of your data analysis and your data handling, just put some semantics. Just like uh, if you have like a, instead of having a, a, a an NumPy array, if you could just have a, a pandas uh, data frame, then you know that that column is called. Uh, brand size or, uh, or PIQ or you know gender or, and then you know exactly that this is the current can't be something else uh, because you name it this way uh, 
Obviously, you could do some errors in the naming. <laughs> That's also possible, but uh, but is it less likely? And it's uh, it's often uh, because you're going to look at uh, the uh, gender and you see that if it uh, looks like a number of uh, voxels, that doesn't write. Uh, so it, it's it's less likely. It's more easy to check. It's more easy to check. Uh, so uh, uh, so that's an important uh, aspect. So let's uh, go into creating data frames, reading data, and just uh, going quickly. Uh, so I'm going to execute uh, that. Uh, uh, that pandas little uh, uh, little command, and you see that uh, I've what I've put as a CSV file is uh, is uh, is actually um, a URL uh, that uh, links to the uh, to the brand size CSV on the web, uh, and because it's a small data set, that's no problem. It can uh, it can be uh, uh, read uh, easily, quickly, and then uh, cached locally. Uh, and again, you see that the separation is like a semicolon, uh, index column is zero, so you can start to, uh, uh, you know, the first, the first column is the index column, um, which uh, in Pandas is a very important concept. The index is uh, the thing you'll be referring the rules uh, with. Uh, and uh, and when you start to merge data set of things, you may you may have to look at what on what index are you going to merge uh, data sets, for instance. So that's a that's a little bit more advanced concept, but uh, please consider uh, and and think of it. What is the index uh, here? Uh, that uh, sorry, that uh, head is a uh, is uh, is just showing us how this uh, very nice table uh, that uh, has like uh, the, the weights, the PIQ, 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 and you see that the second weight is a dot, uh, which is a potential problem. Uh, so uh, so what type? Of, first of all, what type is our data? Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, a very uh, a, a sim uh, like uh, the data is uh, a, a core frame data frame a pandas core data frame uh, it stores values in the numpy arrays which is important to look at so if you look at the type of data values uh, then you have uh, 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 numpy arrays. Uh, which is a very efficient. So NumPy arrays can be complex. Uh, they have to have the same type. Uh, it doesn't mean that the type is not complex. Uh, so uh, that's a complex type that you have here. The D type here is an object that has all those uh, uh, columns. So that's a little bit uh, more advanced, just to give you a bit more information uh, than the, the previous uh, uh, lectures. So missing values are critical problem and, uh, and, uh, and very hard problems. So the missing values here, uh, you, you have like, a, you've seen the first, uh, the first missing value was uh, like a, there was a little dot in this uh, row two, uh, second row uh, and weight columns. This little dot has to be handled. Uh, otherwise we, uh, we won't be able to compute, let's say the mean or like the, any number uh, in that column. So if we don't specify the missing values, not available marker, Pandas will not recognize this and will not be able to do any statistical analysis. So you have to transform your data set such that those missing values uh, uh, are marked as uh, non-numerical. So let's, uh, let's do this. And that's uh, uh, just adding the keywords uh, N, N A underscore values equal dot, and that this is, uh, uh, this is the head, and I'm using only three. But obviously, I can I can look at uh, uh, more uh, rows if I want. And you see that the missing value is now has been uh, turned into a non-numerical. This is great. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, play a bit more, and uh, just to give you a bit more information. So what happens is if, uh, if uh, instead of looking at uh, uh, at the uh, at data, I can. Uh, I drop uh, N A. So uh, dropping N A uh, is uh, applied to data set. And you see that that row that had the missing value has just gone, right? Uh, so I'll just do, uh, do it again, uh, you know, like uh, uh, just looking at the original uh, and then uh, looking at the, uh, um, oops looking at the um, at the one where i drop uh, drop na i apply i apply the drop na method on the data object uh, which uh, will uh, take that pandas array and pandas uh, data frame and remove the uh, na uh, rows where there is an na danger danger uh, you i will i think i have the example why this is a danger um, no, maybe not so let's see uh, let's uh, let's talk to it talk about it uh, now uh, imagine that uh, you have uh, 
and has non-numerical values in many uh, columns, uh, but they're not in the same rows. When you're going to remove NAs, you're going to remove any row that has a, a column with an NA. So it lets you can imagine, uh, you know, places where uh, you will actually reduce your data sets by a lot of data. So, uh, so the handling of missing values in that case uh, will have to be treated differently. Um, I mean, uh, and, and obviously if you don't have an analysis that uh, uses the whole uh, set of columns, you should definitely be careful on which, uh, on what you're removing the NS if you, that you're going that path. Uh, there are other alternatives and, um, and uh, obviously imputation is one of the big one. Um, and uh, that is to mean uh, replacing those uh, numerical values by some uh, reasonable uh, numbers. I mean, that, but that's a whole other topic that I won't touch uh, today. So creating data sets, uh, data, uh, uh, Pandas data frame from arrays, so that it's an easy, uh, easy thing to do. So let's, uh, let's do it. Um, as usual, we'll import uh, NumPy as NP, uh, and this is uh, a little NumPy, uh, little uh, nice function that uh, takes that uh, does a linear, uh, a linear um, uh, sampling from minus six to six, uh, and uh, and it asking for twenty points within uh, uh, between those two uh, those two uh, uh, bounds. Um, and uh, and I'm just taking now the sin the sin and the cos so num by sin num by cos uh, and looking at uh, uh, you can expose that them as a uh, pandas data frame and the way of creating that pandas data frame is to uh, ask pandas data frame and then what is the argument here I'm uh, sure that uh, some of you uh, know that already and you should know by now this is a dictionary right and the dictionary will have um, the uh, the column names as the keys and the um, and the uh, and the values as the uh, at the uh, values at the uh, uh, the arrays at the, as the values. So uh, uh, so if I do enter and look at that, uh, for instance, the five, uh, the fourth, uh, the four first column, uh, and this is uh, let's let's take another a few more, um, <clears throat> and this is this is simply like uh, what I uh, was describing. Uh, so you see, it's a very easy to uh, create a data frame from uh, dictionaries. I make sure they're, they're the right way of, of creating those data frame. There are many, uh, there are other ways, but uh, this is a, an, an easy way. All right. Um, so mainly that was my quick introduction in five minutes on the uh, on the uh, you know like a pandas aspect uh, manipulating data with pandas. Is, uh, so. Um, so one of the key uh, one of the key thing that we want is to look at you know what what in, is in data frame. So let's uh, look at what is the data shape uh, and the data columns um, it have data. And then let's look at you know in data what data um, what is the VIQ of uh, date of the, uh, the the rules for which gender is female. So so this is the way you actually index your slice uh, data frame. Uh, this will give you um, this uh, here will give you uh, a boolean uh, 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 boolean array, right? And so you this so this is basically selecting uh, you know the uh, uh, the rows of the um, of the of, of the uh, you know the uh, the data frame, and then you want within those rows uh, you want the viq. And then I'm taking the mean to look at the mean of the of the of the of those values. So this is like a little bit more advanced. Uh, so please uh, look at you know like uh, make sure you understand you know how that works. Uh, and then I just uh, use the describe data, uh, uh, describe method on on data uh, to uh, to describe the. Uh, uh, the, the you know to give to give a summary of this data data frame. Okay, that's all very nice and good. Um, and I'm guessing that you know what happened. So uh, you remember that uh, the weight was uh, missing for one of the uh, the rows, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and pandas has because it's now a non numerical pandas has uh, uh, appropriately uh, not taken that uh, that row to compute uh, in particular for the weight. Uh, uh, so the count here is 38. So there's clearly two missing values there. There's uh, one missing value in 39, and then uh, you know, like uh, there's a uh, 
um, and the way I know this is that the shape of the uh, of the data frame, which is kind of borrowed from the shape of um, uh, the method shape from the, uh, uh, from NumPy, is 40, 40 and eight. So so you'll see um, a lot of uh, sort of sometimes uh, similarities, sometimes a little bit uh, uh, confusing similarities in some ways because that the uh, the method's name may be the uh, same or uh, very close and uh, and not giving you the same result. So you have to always like. Uh, uh, you know, you, it allows you to go very quickly, uh, and at some stage, you may you may want to make sure that you know you are uh, you are applying the uh, the right methods to the to right object. Sometimes uh, it can be a bit um, uh, tricky uh, when things are you don't actually know. Oh, am I applying this to NumPy way or am I applying it to like a data frame? And then I can some, you just have to be uh, mindful of uh, of what what is what. Uh, Jimmy, um, we got a question. Sure. How do you set it so the values generated always remain the same? Oh, yes, that's a good point. Uh, let me go back to my uh, think. Right. Uh, I did not uh, do that in this one. Did I? No. Uh, but basically, you can uh, set um, uh, in, in this instance here, um, the um, the lint space is going to give you uh, exactly the same answer uh, to that those parameters. There's no randomness here, right? Uh, if you had randomness, uh, then uh, you would uh, you would like uh, set the seed of the random generator to a specific value, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, Google that rapidly if you want. Uh, um, or like I'm sure someone will put that in the chat. Uh, the uh, and that's by setting the seed of that random generator. You will always start the random generator at the same uh, at the same place, and then anything that is uh, again getting uh, sort of like a done uh, uh, randomly generated will be uh, will be uh, uh, giving you the same the same the same sequence of uh, of random values. Um, okay, thank you for the question. It, uh, let me know if uh, that's um, answering it. All right, so uh, so what I'm I uh, uh, was asking here in that uh, little uh, chat uh, thing is uh, uh, what if I do drop an a uh, uh, and then uh, describe on this on the same data set? So I, I do the describe a method, but on the same data set, and uh, you probably uh, don't know if you remember like the. Uh, uh, so the, uh, the sum of those numbers, uh, all, uh, first of all, all those uh, columns here now have 38 uh, samples, uh, and that's the problem I was describing, that uh, you're removing uh, rows that are, uh, because they, one of the columns has an NA, but you sh probably shouldn't in that uh, description of the data set in the first instance. So that's a little uh, uh, warning. Okay, so there's a very, uh, very, very, very useful method that is called uh, group by. Uh, so that a group by will take a category called uh, um, column here, so gender, uh, and uh, I'll just will demonstrate the method uh, using uh, this little example. Um, and it will, uh, what it will do is do for for gender and value in uh, that uh, group by of uh, gender. And so group by of gender is this uh, group by data dot group by of gender. Okay, so that's a new a new thing. Okay, we are we are applying the method group by and with the um, argument gender. Uh, the, um, and this and and then I'm a, I'm a, um, uh, enumerating across all the values in that uh, in that new object um, applied to viq. So viq um, taking only the the viq uh, column. And then I'm printing a gender and value uh, and the means. So uh, first of all, uh, you see that this thing here is an iterable. So there are several things. And then at each time I iterate on it, um, I get back two values. So there must be like some kind of iterable that's uh, giving you back uh, either a list of two values or either a tuple of two values, something like that. That's, the, that's what the, uh, the object will give you. And you can print the gender and the mean. So that's a very useful thing to, uh, and you see that, and you know, like, uh, it's not very clear what is this thing though. Um, so I will, uh, you know, go there and, uh, you know, say, okay, but what, what is a group by thing? Okay, group by is just another object. It's a data frame group by. So it's not a data frame. And I think I would just want to emphasize that. It is not, it's a new thing that is actually more like a sequence of data frame. If I, I know, I haven't studied that, uh, you know, too, too much in detail, but I think it, it's uh, something like a sequence of data frame that will leave uh, from uh, with the um, 
uh, a sequence that is um, uh, going to be uh, with the number of category that you are uh, working with. All right, uh, a quick, uh, interesting little thing. So what if I do, uh, so I'm, I'm demonstrating here the lock uh, method that is uh, location, it's location where you, uh, you enter the, uh, uh, something that will tell you which rows you're interested in and uh, something that will tell you which column you're interested in. Uh, and so, uh, so that data.log of those uh, values here that are uh, generated, I mean, uh, specified by the, uh, the two arguments. Uh, and I'm, one, I'm, I'm actually just adding a one to those values. Uh, so that I'm just adding the, on the IQ a one. So, uh, so, so, the, so let's do that. And then uh, let's think of, a, okay, let's now rerun the gender value in group by gender VIQ. What do you think uh, is, your, is going to be? Let's uh, not do this yet. Uh, what do you think is, so we, we remember uh, what was the, uh, uh, what was the, um, what was the, res the response before? Uh, 109, 115, uh, female and male. Um, and then, uh, so I've, I've run this uh, cell and now I want to know uh, what if I will get, uh, so I have a quick poll of the people. What do you think uh, for five, three seconds? What do you think uh, will be, uh, will I get the same answers or will I not get the same answers? Uh, so I can't see the chat. Let me improve the chat and be a bit interactive. Um, I don't see much response yet. So uh, uh, the female value will be one more, okay? And and that's uh, even if uh, so. The, so the thing I'm uh, okay. Let's uh, let's run it and see what's going on. So one one zero four five one one five. So and it was actually uh, absolutely you're right. It was one oh nine when. So the, the female values are actually one more, uh, despite the fact that uh, I have actually touched the data, the uh, data frame, and I haven't touched the uh, group by object at all. Uh, and that's because the group by object is actually, as we saw in the, in the, in, in the previous course, we saw, like, we saw that the, uh, the group by is the, um, uh, we saw some um, um, uh, changing uh, uh, changing a list when something is a refer referring to sublist or like changing an numpy array when uh, when you are looking at uh, uh, slicing that numpy array you're looking at the view of the numpy array so so basically we haven't copied the data we haven't uh, all the data on the same de on the hood and under the hood and there and and what and uh, and moving and changing data is actually uh, uh, changing the uh, the view of the data, which is this group by object, and it's and insisting a bit uh, painfully on this one because it's a super super uh, classic cause of error uh, that you are actually changing an object and then you're playing with another object uh, that is just a view on that object on that uh, on those data. So please be super careful with those things. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move on because uh, I, I want to cover a bit more than just the pandas and description thing. Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, skip this one. Okay, so, um, so there, there's a little exercise here. I don't think we are going to uh, do it, but uh, please do it uh, at your leisure when uh, after the, the, the course or like uh, um, later on. Uh, so, so you have like a, a couple of lines of exercise. What is the mean value for the IQ for the full population? How many female uh, males were included in the studies? Uh, and so on and so on. Uh, so, uh, so being able to actually quickly get that and being like a, uh, learning the, the Python language and, and, and sorry, the Pandas language in this instance is, is important. Um, I'm actually not very proficient in Pandas. I'm still learning. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, struggling with it. Uh, but, uh, you know, the more you learn uh, and the, the, the quicker will be, you'll be able to do some uh, complex analysis uh, uh, in, a, in, in a safe way. Okay, plotting data, we've seen a, there was a whole course on that, so we're not going to do it again. Uh, but what I want to do is that Pandas itself, I want, want to emphasize that Pandas itself has some plotting tools. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm using, you know, I think, the right uh, way of doing it, which is from Pandas import plotting as 
on this plot, PD, PLT, so that you know that that scatter matrix thing is coming from uh, that package here. And, uh, and that might be slightly different uh, way of uh, uh, coding and the different arguments than the uh, other uh, uh, scatter matrix that you may find in other uh, plotting packages. All right, so uh, let's move on. Uh, so if I want to just uh, plot those things, uh, this is what it's going to look. And uh, you had like a, you have a full experience. You had just had a full experience of that. So I won't uh, uh, go, uh, but you know, it's, it is important to, um, uh, to be able to quickly uh, see those data. And by the way, uh, you see that in that specific data set, uh, there's an interesting, uh, uh, aspect that you probably uh, have uh, noted, and if you haven't uh, looked at that, it's uh, that you know, all those, uh, so this is uh, uh, PIQ, VIQ, FSQ, um, uh, FSIQ, which are, you know, like a, a measure of, a, of, a, of, a, of intelligence in some sense, uh, although it's a lot of term. Um, the, uh, and you see that the, uh, the the, the variation, they, they are clearly like a sort of like a two groups of, uh, of, uh, of points uh, that are separated a bit. Uh, uh, so, um, so all those measures are seem to be correlated, but they also seem to uh, be this uh, sort of like a clustered in two different uh, ways. And, uh, so one of the questions you may, you may like uh, think, okay, is why, what, why is going on and why, why do we have two population here? And you know, like, and this is clearly a bimodal population here, here as well. Here, right? to some extent. All right, uh, hypothesis testing, comparing to a group. Um, so, um, so let's, uh, we are going to first have a quick uh, view of the scipy.stats submodule, uh, which is, uh, I think uh, will be useful for not only hypothesis testing, but anything that you want to do on, the, on statistics uh, with uh, Python. So uh, two ways of doing it. Again, uh, I uh, personally prefer the uh, to make sure that you know I know uh, where that. I mean, like I, I, I do the three letters or two letter uh, kind of a summary of that. Uh, but you know, it's uh, the same. So you can get access to full stats or SST in that after that. Oops. So I'm going to do a little kind of a, my little story or like a, just to uh, sort of a motivate a little bit. Uh, why do we learn those things? Um, so uh, reminding you that uh, the Cohen's D effect size uh, is sort of like the, uh, the ratio of the, uh, the effect size, the row effect size. So let's say the difference between two means or like uh, some other effect size. Um, and uh, with the uh, standard deviation of the data and not of the means, of the data. And I think that's, uh, I want to just uh, really, really emphasize that. This is, uh, that's how the Cohen's D uh, is normalized is uh, with the standard division of the data and not of the mean of the data. Um, so um, uh, so let's say, let's say an author, an author reports uh, that, uh, author's report, sorry for the typo. Uh -huh. I know that I can do something with that. Um, all right. Uh, so authors report that um, uh, EPOE uh, effect, uh, the, the, the variation of the gene, um, uh, EPOE effect on hippocampal volume has a p-value of six to the minus 10 with um, n equal uh, seven and, oh, that's really, uh, All right, uh, with, with n equals 733 uh, uh, um, um, samples, so like a, a participant in that display. What's the effect size of APOE on the hippocampal volume? Oops. Uh, so uh, can you think for five, 10 seconds? And uh, if, you are ask, if you're being asked that question, and you want to know the coins D effect size of uh, APOE on the hippocampal volume, or the variation of APOE on the hippocampal volume, uh, how would you go about that, given what is reported in that paper? Uh, so I'll give you uh, 10, 10, 15 seconds. Don't, uh, uh, you, you'll get the answer, but uh, just for the, the fun of it, like I think of it, I mean, uh, would I be able to easily get that uh, uh, FX size? Um, so, okay. Uh, yeah, that's not a too easy question. So I, like, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not expecting too many answers <laughs> right away. <laughs> uh, but uh, but just, I just think of it like uh, you, what you're given is the p-value. 
and the number of subjects. So how do you get back to that uh, coins D? Uh, how do you get to the effect size and to the, uh, the standard deviation of the data? Um, huh. Well, um, well, one of the things that, uh, so I'm going to uh, go is so one of the things that, uh, you know, the p-value can be, let's say, let's imagine for a second, and uh, it's a hypothesis, let's imagine for a second that uh, the p-value, uh, p-value is kind of like a, has a one-to-one -one mapping with a z-value, correct, right? And you can, uh, once you know z, uh, in a normal distribution, you know, like uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the p, uh, which is, you know, the, uh, and if you know, uh, if you know the, uh, um, so the you know, so the p value will just be the uh, you know some of the uh, uh, integrating whatever is uh, you know above the uh, the c value that you have uh, so um, uh, so yeah so you could you could relate the p value to the z value to some extent and the z value we know is like some kind of effect size divided by the standard deviation of that effect size which is the uh, standard deviation of the of the mean, and like if the effect size is, is related to the mean, uh, that would be the standard deviation of the mean. Uh, so you could, so that's the way of uh, going about that, this kind of little thing. So I'm uh, going to do it, uh, you know, using that, uh, using uh, stats, uh, SciPad stats. Uh, and what SciPad stats is providing you is uh, enormous number of possible uh, distributions. So uh, uh, in this instance, I want to emphasize how I do it. Uh, in this instance, I'm defining here N01 as a normal distribution using SciPy stats uh, of uh, mean zero and some division of one, okay? So that's the definition of it. Uh, you could very well define, uh, not, not a normal, but uh, let's say T uh, distribution uh, as the standard as the SST dot T with a certain degrees of freedom. In that in that respect, you would have to give the degrees of freedom like with a centralized T. Um, so I'm, I'm, took, I'm for the moment. Let's assume like a normal distribution. I'm getting the normal distribution. I'm thinking, okay, what's the Z value for the uh, for that P value? And this is uh, given to you by the inverse survival function. So if you don't know what is the, the uh, uh, survival function and inverse survival function. Just think of it as the uh, uh, like uh, if you uh, if you go from uh, you know like uh, if uh, one minus the CDF is the is the uh, is the way to go from uh, Z to P, then this is the inverse of it, uh, which is will be. Uh, um, and then uh, and then uh, and then you can compute D, which will be uh, that uh, uh, in that. Uh, uh, that z value uh, that we've just uh, done. So this is z, um, and then divided by the square root of seven of the number of sub of participants. And that's because that z uh, that uh, z has been, uh, as you know, uh, 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 using the number of participants to uh, divide for the square root for the uh, for uh, for the square root for the variation of the mean and not the variation of the data. So this is it. Uh, and then you know, if you just run that. Um, this gives you an approximation of that uh, Cohen's D uh, effect size, which I think is useful. Uh, is the, by the way, is the 0.2 uh, big Cohen's D effect size? Probably not. Um, it's not a very big one. It's not a too very small one either. But uh, you know, it's 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 very interesting. So in that in that specific paper, uh, like uh, they didn't report the uh, the actual effect sizes. So that's a little bit of a, uh, something I want to emphasize. Okay. Let's move on, uh, but uh, please have a look at this little exercise. Think, okay, uh, you know, what's, uh, what is this, uh, you know, uh, how do I do this sort of thing? Because that will give you like uh, some, uh, some good uh, grasping on, on, on playing with those things. And I think that's important. Um, by the way, um, I'm, uh, uh, this is where the power of like an object oriented and, and path on is, is I think I'm sure are something equivalent as well, but I'm not, uh, I'm not a uh, proficient person. Uh, but this is like a, this object N01, which is normal distribution. I can actually, uh, you know, ask for random variables from it. Uh, and, and, and I give it a size of, you know, what, what do I want? So maybe I want, uh, uh, let's say to start with, I want just uh, 10 random variables. Uh, so that will give you a sampling of in that distribution. 
but that is just n01 is just an object you could just have like a, a function that says hey you know i'm giving you a distribution give me back a sampling from it and then you would have a function taking as parameters uh, this distribution and then giving you back the sampling so that could be a variable within a function so that's a, a little uh, you know both python and and you know and if you plan to do some sampling on the on various distribution or those things this is the way you would generalize your code very easily all right, uh, so yeah, and, uh, and obviously you can, you know, gives you, that gives you back an umpire array, uh, and then you can give it uh, any, uh, any, uh, any, uh, any shape you want. It could be, uh, could be something like that, for instance, two, five, two, five, two, for instance, it could be a three-dimensional uh, numpy array uh, that you, you're asking a normal distribution from, you're asking uh, a, a sampling from. All right. Um, a great number of distribution. All of those distribution have PDF, CDF, survival function, inverse survival function, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, so, uh, so I'm just like uh, looking here, for instance, as uh, like uh, I want a uniform function, so I, I ask for a uniform function. So that's uniform functions that, again that distribution uh, uh, objects, and then from that so distribution object, I will ask for random variables, and then I will plot those things. Uh, I've got a little um, warning here. I, I, that's uh, sometimes often due to the fact that uh, you have a uh, uh, various uh, uh, various uh, um, uh, package version, and uh, and some and the various various uh, the, 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 the package version changes, and you have to like uh, update your package version. So that's uh, interesting. Uh, uh, so don't be scared by those things. Uh, it's just like a, uh, most often is the case of a, pa a package version. Okay, we've got a question. Sure. Uh, could we see how to generate the same pseudo random seed? Yes, uh, I'm sure someone will uh, put that in the chat, but that should be uh, using NumPy for instance. Uh, just a sec. Uh, so numpy uh, dot random uh, np dot random. Let's uh, let me. Uh, so I don't have that on the top of my head, unfortunately, but uh, that's a very easy uh, information to find. Um, and I'm sure uh, one of the TA will be quicker than I am in uh, in doing this. Uh, so I think, uh, so fix uh, seed in NumPy. NumPy and uh, so random seed. And then you, what you do is that uh, NumPy random seed, seed equals something. So let me uh, do that for you in this uh, M above. And I will do uh, this seed equal one for instance, okay. And that will fix the seed to one. Uh, oops. And that's because NumPy is actually not NumPy, but it's NB as it should be. Okay, so now we've seed, we, we fixed the seed to one. Any random thing that we're going to do are going to always uh, start with one. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the, random, <laughs> the random generation are going to be uh, starting with a specific uh, place in the, uh, in the uh, in the um, um, in in the, how is it called again um, uh, the list of values that are randomly generated. Random generators are super complex objects. Uh, NumPy has uh, uh, one or two years ago have, uh, has uh, updated its uh, NumPy in the, its uh, random generator. Uh, so uh, those things are like a you know active field of research of how to do that properly. It, I think NumPy has now one of the best uh, random generator. Uh, uh, available, so uh, better than uh, uh, than uh, many many others uh, in many many other uh, languages. Uh, so just to finish on the uh, uh, on this on on the information on, on the SciPass stats. Um, uh, SciPass stats uh, has like two type of uh, a distribution, uh, the discrete and the continuous. Uh, and this is just a little figure that I've taken from a ThinkStat uh, book. Uh, 
that is uh, showing you a little bit of the uh, the, the uh, going from one to the uh, to the other, like uh, what's uh, how you go from a, a CDF that is uh, discrete to a continuous, so like it's kind of a smoothing operation, uh, and then CDF to PDF, it's so a differentiation and, and integration for going back to CDF, and then the binarization for like a and, and so on. So it's just like a, a quick thing. But I want to emphasize that you know the uh, there's two uh, subclasses of uh, of uh, distribution. Uh, there's the subclass which is continuous, which would have some uh, uh, specific method, and then the uh, uh, the discrete uh, subclass which have, will have uh, some methods. Uh, and some of those methods will be different. Obviously, they all share some common methods like uh, as well. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, to be learned from the uh, uh, number by that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get to statistics a little bit. <laughs> the uh, simplest statistical test, the t-test, when uh, SciPass starts as, a, as a, an implementation for it, uh, uh, and uh, and you launch it uh, easily using a stat t-test in one sample. And what this thing is giving you is. Uh, um, statistics uh, the p-value and the p-value here you see is uh, so uh, close to zero that just because we're comparing the mean of the viq to zero uh, but if we were to compare to the i don't know like uh, 110 uh, you know that uh, that would be not significant um, so it's uh, obviously comparing to zero is not a very uh, sensible test uh, i mean that, uh, we know it's, it's not uh, on average zero um, definition of p-value again, probability of observing statistic equal to the one seen in the data or one uh, that is more extreme when the null hypothesis is true and you know now by now that is not an easy definition and something you have to think about. Uh, so I won't uh, repeat what I've uh, uh, we said already, but uh, it does require the knowledge of the null hypothesis, what is your null? Uh, it does require the trust of the statistics. Are you choosing to compare the means or are you choosing to compare some uh, other function of the data? Uh, it has the concept of repeating the whole studies in the same way. Uh, it has to be like, a, so you're thinking like, you know, the uh, future repetition of hypothetical uh, repetition of that study with the same study design, the same sampling scheme, the same definition of statistics. So all those things put a lot of constraints. Uh, it's still a useful thing to do, uh, but, uh, but you have to be careful with the interpretation as we uh, mentioned already. Two simple t-tests, that's very uh, like a same sort of thing. So uh, this uh, uh, will look at the, uh, the side by stats uh, that t-test and uh, in, um, underscore int uh, for independent, I think. Um, and this is just demonstrated in this uh, uh, in here. Um, and showing like uh, that there is uh, no obvious differences between uh, in this instance the uh, the male or the female in the VIQ. Um, or it's showing no uh, <laughs> showing that you know we couldn't reject the null on this uh, on this hypothesis. A uh, pair t test repeated measure on the same individuals. Uh, so let's uh, you know, like see whether the uh, uh, F FISQ or PIQ are significantly different or not. Uh, you know, from a different from for the same subjects. So uh, if you uh, do this uh, like a, a gender by group um, box plot, uh, you will look at like that. You you like you describe your data first. Uh, uh, showing the, uh, so that's the, uh, again, the gender by group. Uh, and I have to be careful because we may, we may have a left that plus one somewhere. So like, uh, just like a word of caution, uh, which is also a word of caution on the use of the, uh, of the Jupyter notebook when you do something on the, one of the uh, early sale and then you forgot about it. And then you, uh, uh, so always rerun everything uh, from scratch, uh, possibly like uh, wiping out all the, variables, uh, the Python variables that you have in your kernels by just restarting the kernel and then rerunning everything. So this is the, uh, uh, the a quick description of the data uh, using the box plot. Uh, we know that uh, there are better ways of visualizing, but that's an easy, quick way of looking at that. And then this is uh, a test statistical t-test between FSQ, FIQ, FSIQ and PIQ uh, on, those, uh, on those data. And we find like a, a small like, 
be a statistic of a T uh, 0 0.46. So can you just uh, quickly, and I've uh, hinted to it already, so uh, it should be easy question for you. Guys, can you hint uh, quickly what is the issue uh, with that uh, quick test? And uh, I will take... Um, I will take one answer. The first answer was uh, if someone finds the issue uh, with that test. Mm, waiting for one answer, someone, anyone <laughs> uh, will give me the, the problem. The problem is that they are not independent exactly. They are coming from the same uh, participants. Uh, thank you. And therefore that test, uh, uh, is looking at a variance that is uh, not the right variance. It's looking at variance in terms uh, in, uh, that the intersubject uh, variance properly. Uh, so uh, yeah, so are measured on the same individuals. The variance due to the intersubject viability is confounding, and that can be removed using the parity test. So let's go to the, the, the parity test, uh, and that's uh, test uh, related. Um, and then, uh, and then the, I mean, we find like a p-value or like an effect that is much uh, bigger uh, because the variance of the subjects have been, uh, has been, uh, some of the variance has been removed, the uh, confounding variance has been removed. All right, uh, and uh, this is uh, equivalent to the stats.t test, uh, one sample uh, of if you take the difference, you know, directly the difference, you see that you find exactly the same value, so the p.08, for instance, that we had before. T test assume Gaussian error. We can use Wilkinson with sign rank T uh, test if uh, we have like a, some uh, a suspicion that our distributions are not Gaussian uh, by looking at them or just by the, uh, the uh, how they were generated. Um, uh, remember, I mean, Per was saying that uh, most of the issues are not Gaussian. This is true-ish, but also remember there's a very powerful theorem that, uh, you know, uh, says that like if you're adding things uh, of, uh, of a finite variance, if you're adding, you know, enough uh, uh, little uh, uh, variables that are of a finite variance, uh, variance you will end up with uh, something that is uh, Gaussian. Again, that's a uh, 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 that's a limit. So of, of course, I think Pierre is right. Uh, but uh, but depending on the on the situation, you have like you may have justified uh, uh, rationale for uh, considering a, 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 a Gaussian distribution. Anyways, if you uh, if you want to make sure that this is also uh, what's going on with uh, Wilkinson, like you know, uh, uh, relaxing the uh, Gaussian parameter, the Gaussian uh, uh, hypothesis, then this is what you would get uh, as we all right, so there's a little exercise. We are not going to do it, obviously, uh, too little time. Uh, uh, but the thing that I want to cover uh, today is this uh, stats model formula API, import OLS. So look at that carefully, because uh, uh, if for those who, uh, who know um, uh, stats model, this, is, uh, this will not be uh, uh, sort of like a surprise. Uh, for, do for those who don't, this is a very powerful uh, package that uh, uh, try to mimic what uh, R is doing, uh, and, uh, and it's a very, very uh, quick way of uh, modeling um, uh, with uh, linear models with, uh, in, the, in this instance, with uh, ordinary least square. Um, so, uh, what's, what's going on? So, I'm just going to reread uh, the uh, Pandas data frame. That is a good practice because we've messed up with it uh, in some ways. Uh, uh, on the uh, uh, before and now the uh, the model uh, it's actually not a good uh, some I've, I've taken this from the Cypher lecture the uh, the awesome author of the Cypher lecture could have done a little bit better in terms of uh, of uh, naming the variables I think this is actually not the model itself um, you know this would be the model probably and this is the fit of the model using the data. Uh, so if you want to be uh, a little bit OCD, like uh, sometimes I am, you know, you would call that model fit as a random variable. Anyway, let's call it model, uh, remembering that uh, this is uh, not uh, the model, but that's the fit of the model with the data. And what you do is uh, you create a string uh, that has the column names of the pandas data frame, where the first, the first column names here, the first variable name viq, 
is your theta, your y, and those uh, those columns here are going to make the uh, design matrix. So, so, uh, so you're going to explain uh, the uh, uh, exogenous uh, viable VIQ by the endogenous viable uh, gender MRI counts and height. And it's just an example to show you know how this is done. And then this is just pr pr uh, printing the model summary. Actually, I don't think we need the print. We can just uh, do model summary. Oh no, we do need the print. Not okay. visible now, actually. I'm going to zoom in. Pardon me? Uh, I, I missed uh, I missed the uh, the intervention. So if you want to just repeat it, anyways. Um, <clears throat> so uh, oh yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, yes, there are some there's something behind, so that's why I couldn't see it. Uh, fine. Yeah, the uh, Jupyter notebook uh, prints only the last variable, so, so it's always a kind of a good practice to do print if you want to. Um, so what what is that giving us, uh, it's giving us a lot of things. Uh, first of all, it's giving us, uh, you know, what is the dependent variable? Dependent variable is a, not a great term, but that's often what it's called. Uh, so that's the, the y's. And uh, in, uh, if we uh, write this uh, y equal uh, x beta plus, uh, plus error, uh, it's giving you how the when uh, things were uh, fitted with the ordinary square and the method, the least square, uh, the model is, sorry, the model, the side that model is ordinary square, the method is the square, the dates, number of observation is important, the degrees of freedom in the model, so how many, you know, like, uh, and the, uh, uh, and, uh, and of the residuals, uh, whether the covariance of, you know, was robust or not, uh, and then a lot of uh, you know information of the how you know, good that fit of the model is, the log likelihood of the data, probability of the, the F statistic, and so on. Uh, so, and the second part of that table, you see, uh, you know, what is the, what are the coefficients on those uh, uh, on those columns? Uh, so, uh, you know, the MRI, the, uh, the uh, for all those things, so this is uh, this is the gender column. So you you know that there are two genders. So I so uh, uh, so uh, stats uh, stats models uh, was uh, clever enough uh, to uh, uh, to realize that this is uh, this is a categorical variable, uh, and uh, and what it is going to do is just model one of them because there are two of them, and that's going to be redundant with the intercept. Uh, always, and I'll go and go a bit more on that uh, later. On. Uh, and the, and then all the t values for each of those parameters: uh, the standard error, the uh, uh, confidence interval, and the p value here. All right, and then some test on you know, uh, especially like uh, the uh, uh, you were talking about you know whether the uh, distribution is Gaussian or not of the error, the error distribution is Gaussian or not. Uh, those are, I mean, those are not proof that uh, those distributions are uh, normal. We can't prove that actually, um, but uh, but those are actually you know at least if there, if you have like a significant test of the. And JB is not me. That's Jack Perra, <laughs> Jack Perra test, like looking at the skewness and um, and the and some some characteristics of those distribution and, and checking that they are not uh, uh, they are in line of uh, they're compatible with a Gaussian distribution somehow. Uh, and that's you know this is this is going to be there. Okay, that's a very nice uh, table that uh, you know like it's done a lot of tests for us. Uh, so I'm uh, going to now uh, just. Um, uh, Look at the couple of warnings, but I'm uh, going to uh, plot um, using the uh, pandas plotting uh, function. Uh, I'm going to so like from pandas the tool import plotting, um, <clears throat> and then looking at the uh, and the scatter matrix uh, using again the data that we've just analyzed, uh, and uh, and that is going to. Uh, uh, Give give us like which which are the ones that are green and which one the ones that are uh, blue in this uh, in this uh, in this figure and and uh, and that's a that's a very uh, nice uh, figure you probably don't see it very well uh, yeah hopefully you see it just tell me if that's not um, uh, visible on your screen all right um, let's go a little bit further uh, we have like a, a bit some time more so like a, I'm, I'm certainly not going to finish everything but um, uh, at least I want to give you a little bit of a, an overview of various things uh, and let's uh, let's address the linear model multiple factors analysis variance uh, a bit more I mean you've seen like uh, already uh, multivariate regression uh, with like some uh, Gaussian hypothesis uh, for the uh, for the errors 
So uh, let's do, uh, I like to do very simple things. Uh, so like uh, we've, you've seen the formula, so we will go a bit more in the formulas uh, section and then uh, look at the very, very, and start with a very, very simple linear regression. So uh, let's import uh, matplotlib by plot as PLT as usual, the stats model API as OLS. Uh, and so from the stat models API I've import uh, OLS. And then from the stats, stats model dot stats dot ANOVA uh, sub package, uh, there is uh, ANOVA uh, linear model uh, here. So we're going to create um, uh, X uh, and then, uh, oh, actually I've, I had the, uh, uh, the solution to what you're, you were asking before here. Uh, we're going to sit, set the seed to one here, uh, create an X, which is between minus five and five. Uh, and then, uh, and, uh, and when you're using linear space, that includes those bound. Um, and then create a, a, a Y, which is minus five plus three times X plus uh, some, uh, some, some errors. Uh, and the way I do the errors is like, I'm, I'm here I'm not using uh, uh, SciPy stats, but I'm using NumPy. So you, know, I could, you may have like a slightly different ways of uh, generating those, uh, those things, but that's uh, NumPy has that. And uh, it gives you, and I give it the shape of the uh, of x uh, as the size of the uh, of the, the the array that I want back. So let's do this. Plot uh, this uh, uh, this thing, and that's uh, giving us a very simple uh, a very simple. Um, can you guys see the uh, the plot? Or uh, I just uh, don't know because yeah, we can the, see it. you can see it. Okay. Yeah. And you don't see this uh, annoying uh, red uh, square in it? No? Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I probably don't see exactly what you see, so I, I just uh, wanted to, to check. We, we, we do see a little green square. Oh, okay. So uh, as, as I said, I'm colorblind. So <laughs> is that better or is it uh, uh, less uh, visible? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so yes, so that's a very simple simulation and like a very uh, quick representation. Uh, and then uh, again, what you do, like you create a Pandas data frame uh, using the, uh, the dictionary that we've uh, talked to before and uh, just repetition is pedagogy. And uh, this is uh, like the, the model. And again, I would call it model fit rather than model, but that's, let's uh, go along with this and you will find the same sort of like, uh, 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 description that I've uh, uh, talked about before. All right, so uh, I was referring to the ANOVA uh, method and, uh, and uh, StatsMold that uh, StatsMold gives you this uh, access to, uh, to ANOVA methods as well. So we can, uh, um, and some warnings, which I didn't have before because I probably had rebuilt my, uh, uh, my environment. Um, the uh, and that's a that's a very uh, sort of like a helpful uh, ANOVA uh, uh, table that you can get uh, very easily using this uh, this method. All right. Um, so uh, one of the things is that uh, this very high level uh, package is giving you is like a you know you can you can sort of like a, a, a play with uh, with uh, one liners of code and 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 have like a complex analysis uh, done. But often, if not so very, and probably very often, you want to have a bit more access of the low level aspects. Okay, what exactly is my design matrix? Uh, uh, what exactly is, uh, you know, this, uh, this parameter of the model and so on? Um, and so, uh, so uh, in this, uh, so that's useful to know the terminology that uh, uh, Stats model is using for this and uh, to uh, simplify uh, the endogenous variables are the, uh, the Y variables. Um, the uh, uh, the that you you're trying to predict the, uh, you're trying to predict and the x are the x generous variable uh, representing the feature uh, that you are uh, using to make that prediction so that's um, uh, important to to know uh, and the quick uh, exercise that I wanted to give you, uh, which we won't do because there are not enough time, but uh, is how do you uh, uh, retrieve the estimated parameters from the model above? Uh, and as usual in Python or in IPython, uh, uh, 
or in, uh, therefore in Jupyter Notebook as well, uh, using the type completion will be uh, extremely useful. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I will look at uh, what is in model. I gave you the answer. Oops. So I'm using the type completion. And you see, I don't know if you see because that's fairly small on my screen. So I don't know how that looks for you guys, but uh, you see, there's a way long list of things that model has. Um, uh, but I mean, what I'm interested in is actually, you know, like, uh, um, I mean, so you could have look at the parameters. Uh, there must be somewhere the eigenvalues, the probably eigenvalues of the, uh, uh, of the design matrix. Um, and so you, you could look at the parameters. Uh, I actually want myself in this example, um, to look at the uh, uh, the model itself. So I will look at model.model. .model. Uh, that's why model fit was a better thing. And then there I can see uh, degrees of freedom of that model, residual, and dog, and dog names, exog, exog names. So I think that's uh, that's where you you can, uh, yeah, so for instance, exog names. Oh, this is uh, just a, uh, the name of our uh, the variable in the, in the design matrix and what's the, uh, and what's exog and what it, it's uh, it's actually uh, the intercept and that uh, and that x variable. Okay, so so you see how like uh, you know easily you can uh, programmatically access all those things and uh, and in one of my previous study I had to like uh, uh, do many many of those uh, analyses and then you know have a script that to look at those objects and uh, retrieve some of those parameters in uh, in specific places and, and so on. So it, it's it's very powerful uh, uh, to be able to do that in a, in a programmatic way. That's why you're learning those things. Categorical variables, if you're comparing groups or multiple categories, um, uh, so I'll just uh, rerun this, uh, make sure that uh, uh, we, uh, we can look at, so the, uh, this is just a, a simple model looking at VIQ as a, as a, a function of the of, uh, gender. Uh, and plus one here, uh, that's interesting. So, so when you're look, dealing with categorical variables, um, uh, there are several ways of constructing your design matrix, and they make and that can be a little bit confusing um, because uh, the usual way of uh, what I will be doing by default and what uh, I think that's that stats is uh, uh, stats model is doing by default is actually adding the intercept and then removing one of the category. So let's say you had like a uh, so we have two genders. So like in that in that same instance here we we'll get. Uh, we we'll get, uh, you know, by default, we get uh, an intercept of one and uh, and uh, one of the gender, uh, probably the, the, the first one and the, the second one will be uh, omitted. But you can force uh, SciPad, SciPad stats to actually not do that. So you can force to have an intercept and that's the plus one that is here, or you can force to not have an intercept. So let's say uh, here, for instance, I was looking at, uh, you know, the, the coefficients are intercept and then gender, uh, uh, male in this instance, and then if I run this with the minus one, uh, what I see is that uh, I've got the gender female, gender male, uh, and I uh, find again the uh, uh, the means of those uh, of those genders because that's uh, in this instance it will give you exactly the same uh, same. Name. All right, so uh, so that's useful uh, because then you and then if I wanted to have access to the exact uh, you know some very design matrix, that's what I would uh, go back to that uh, fitted model. Then I would look at the model. Uh, so in that instance, for instance, uh, I, I did the right thing, which was calling the model uh, the uh, the actual model, although it's uh, depending on some of the data, of course. And then the model fit uh, uh, object has uh, is, is differently named. Kevin, we've got a question. Yes. Uh, can you briefly explain when we should include or exclude the intercept? Right. So uh, in general, uh, don't let stats, uh, 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 stats model do it for you. Like in general, uh, you like, uh, it's just that sometimes you want, uh, for instance, let's say you have uh, three uh, categories. Uh, you have a, a category variable with three values and, uh, and you want to do uh, t test specific tests uh, across those categories, like uh, category one minus two, category two minus three, or, or category one minus three, and so on. If you let uh, that uh, intercept uh, be there, uh, it um, starts again. Starts but would remove one of those categories because uh, otherwise you'll have some redundancy in the design matrix. You would be able to recreate the intercept by summing 
uh, for instance, the, uh, the values of the, uh, the design metrics of the three categories. So, uh, so that redundancy is, a, is not necessarily a problem. It can be a problem so that you know, people who are uh, writing those, uh, those software prefer to avoid it. And, uh, and so therefore, uh, yeah, so you, you, we, we prefer to have like a design metric that is not ranked deficient in uh, technical terms. So, uh, so if you wanted to, uh, to then compare category one and two and category two and three with that intercept and with one of the category removed, it's going to be a bit, I mean, it can be done. <laughs> it's just going to be a bit, uh, uh, it will make it not easy and not straightforward for you to do that. Because, you know, like uh, you only have now two columns of categories and one intercept. And uh, how do I, like, uh, let's say you have one and two and the intercept. How do I know what is the contrast between category two minus category three? Uh, I don't have category three in my design matrix. So how do I do that? That's what, there are ways. It's not, <laughs> it has to be you know, like uh, all the information is there. Uh, you can retrieve it in some uh, uh, funny ways, um, but, uh, but it's not easy. So I would in that instance, uh, if you want to have access to all those columns um, and, uh, and uh, parameters, I would just do this minus one here. And then we get, you know, like uh, you'll have those your, your free categories, and then you'll be able. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, how to do a t test or f test on those uh, on those columns. So that's uh, that's one of the uh, uh, reasons. In general, again, just let uh, uh, stats model do the, his job and um, be good. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, just showing you again the uh, uh, what are the uh, names of the columns of your design metrics. Uh, and you can force uh, you can force a, a, a category a, a variable to be categorical. So sometimes, like for instance, sometimes your uh, columns will be coded by you know ones, two, and threes, and like a, and it's it's actually a categorical variable. The one, the one, two, and threes are not like a, a meaningful in terms of them of their um, you know the, uh, the numbers. They're just meaningful in terms of like separating. Uh, rows into three categories and so you can you can force uh -huh. those things to be uh, to be there yeah. is there i think yes i think someone needs to mute uh, themselves okay link to t-test between different surface q and q like uh, it, this is just to show uh, another way of doing it so uh, and showing a little bit of a manipulation in pandas as well uh, in this instance, I'm going to create three pandas data frame, uh, one with IQ, uh, that is the data of FIQ, and I will, I will add another column, which is called uh, type, and has the value FSIQ. And then the second data frame will be, uh, again, a value, the, the, same, the same first uh, column, which is named IQ, the data of PIQ, and then the type column will have the PIQ value, and so on. Um, so, uh, and the data long uh, is actually moving now and, and concatenating those things, uh, those uh, data uh, FSQ and, and data PIQ. So what that's going to look like, um, and I know it's a bit of a long thing here, but it's going to look like the first column is going to be IQ as we defined, the second column is going to be type and the type is going, is going to have two uh, values, one FSIQ and one PIQ. That is the long form, uh, uh, which is, you know, like, a, uh, and remember, look at those uh, index, the index now, the index, for instance, uh, 10 uh, is occurring twice, one with the PIQ and one with the FSIQ. And that means that, uh, you know, this is uh, the index here as is not uh, like, a, there's, no, there's no one unique number per uh, row. Uh, there are several, uh, but what is unique is the combination of those things across across columns, especially the combination of uh, the uh, first one and the and the uh, second column, the third column in this instance. Okay, so uh, so we can now fit uh, like a IQ and uh, see whether like a, it has a, it's, it's a regressive on type as the categorical variable and. Uh, and this is what you get, and you have like a, 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 a very significant, uh, uh, actually not, not a significant uh, uh, test here. So uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, shows the, uh, and again, you can, you can look at the exact design metrics and so on. 
Uh, same values. Uh, yeah, so if you look at exactly what was this uh, uh, statistic, the, the T stats and the P value, so 0.46 and 0 0.0. Uh, six four, then you see like exactly the same values, so like you're demonstrating that the uh, the OLS uh, uh, is doing exactly what uh, the, uh, uh, the the T test will be doing, the parity test will be doing. Okay, uh, going back to the brain size IQ uh, are different. Um, and test if the VIQ of male and female are different after removing the effect of brain size, height, and weight. So that was a little exercise. So let's do it uh, together briefly. I see the time flying. Uh, I just want to finish that section. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, actually you can run it uh, uh, yourself. Uh, you have like uh, things you like. Uh, so the, the answer would be like a look at the VIQ as a function of weight height and uh, MRI count and gender. Uh, those are all the explanatory variables. And this, and therefore, if you look at the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the question, uh, like uh, you're accounting for those variables, so you're kind of removing the effect of those variables if you're testing for another. So like if you're testing the, uh, if you're testing gender, you're removing the weight and height, for instance, from, the, uh, from that test. That is very important. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, this is another quick example that I won't describe. Uh, and this is the way you do, uh, for instance, an F test or a T test. Uh, you take the uh, object model fit that we have uh, described before, and you look at an F test. I would look at the, uh, the F test between the first and the second columns, wherever the difference between the first and the second columns. Uh, so it'd be like a, like a T test uh, square. If you want the difference between those, uh, the, the parameter of uh, uh, the parameters of those two uh, uh, columns. Uh, right, uh, interesting. Uh, quick thing, like for instance, if you wanted to test both for uh, weight and height uh, on average, are they doing? Are they explaining anything in your model? You could do uh, what I call the multi, like a, a, an F test, a, a multi-dimensional uh, um, test where you you take uh, several combinations of the parameters of the model. So here, like you, uh, the first one we, we did, we did first parameter minus second parameter. Uh, that was what we were testing. Uh, and here we do a first parameter for the first, uh, sort of like uh, uh, the first, uh, um, <clears throat> selecting the first, the, the third column. And then uh, here, the uh, fourth parameter, selecting the fourth column. And that's not at all the same thing as, let's say, having uh, this one like that, because that would be the sum that would make the sum of those two parameters. And they were testing the sum of those two parameters. OK, so that was a quick uh, like a remark. I think uh, um, it's an important one. I want to briefly describe, and I know I'm running out of time, the robust statistics with stats model. So I'm just going to go it very quickly. Uh, there are a reasonable package for robust uh, statistics in stats model, and this is one of them. It's called the uh, uh, stats model. So the stats model API here is, uh, stat, is called as SM. Uh, a robust linear model here is uh, using some uh, uh, some ways of uh, making the, uh, the fit robust. Uh, this is just an example of the table that you would get. It will look very much like the one you, you look at for the uh, uh, non-robust uh, version of it. Um, and then, you know, I can, uh, looking at, uh, you know, an example here where I fit uh, something which has uh, some data, which has some, uh, uh, some, um, uh, uh, some outliers, and this is the only the last thing I want to show you. Uh, if I can show you that properly, um, and this is okay. The data look. Uh, I mean, if you look at how the data were generated, this is uh, the problems. There are some of the data are like uh, not quite generated. The model that we looked at was. Uh, uh, was a quadratic model, so like a, with a linear aspect and a quadratic aspect. So we're trying to explain those data with those two uh, components. And, uh, and this is what uh, um, an OLS would give you. It would give like this, uh, this fit uh, of this uh, quadratic here. So uh, clearly with uh, very, very large residuals um, at, uh, for those uh, five points here. And this is what the robust version of that regression would give you. Um, 
I can see some questions. So uh, I think I've, I've finished the uh, at least one part which uh, I wanted to go through. Uh, there's another part which uh, uh, I, you know I leave you to read and uh, understand. It's actually quite self-contained. So if you uh, if you want to uh, go through it uh, at some stage, I just want to alert people from the uh, the problem of having like correlated regressors. If you in the interpretation, like if you're testing uh, one uh, regressor versus when uh, other uh, regressors are correlated to it, then you have to think that you're testing just the additional uh, explanation power of that regressor. So you're kind of removing the effect of any other regressors before you do that. Okay, so uh, I think I uh, have to stop here. Um, thank you guys for following uh, through. Um, and uh, I will take a few questions before we break for lunch. So uh, let me uh, move that window. Thank you. And thank you guys for following. Uh, let me know if you have other things. Um, Never models, oops. Never model seems to generate overall model significance. Uh, is there a way to get those value? Overall model significance. I think the the the, the general F test in the uh, the first part of the uh, will give you like a you know is uh, is is that model uh, uh, explaining uh, uh, some variance of the data uh, you know generally like across all those columns. So it will be. Uh, uh, equivalent to like uh, this multi-dimensional uh, kind of like a way of uh, specifying your F test where you would, uh, like uh, have a little identity matrix on all those uh, uh, columns. So uh, one zero 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 for like, uh, you know, five ten zero one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 one for instance, with like if you had four uh, columns in your model. So um, I don't, that F test is very likely not to account for the uh, intercept. So uh, you probably don't, uh, you're not testing for the intercept. So like if you, if your data has some, some like a non-zero mean, uh, you know, you're not, you're not accounting for this uh, intercept in your, uh, in that uh, F test. But you can check that easily, uh, just, uh, just play with it. Um, and, uh, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll confirm that my assumption here. Uh, could you please explain a bit about uh, tomorrow test? Are we supposed to write run statistical code? No, uh, tomorrow test will be uh, very similar to uh, the, uh, the assessment that you had on Tuesday. Uh, the tomorrow's assessment for those uh, important for those who are taking the course for credit is going to be uh, uh, of the same sort of nature of the uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Tuesday Tuesday afternoon uh, assessment. Um, uh, good discussion about this subject and cross validated. Yes, thank you, Jack. That is very true. Um, can you briefly explain when we should include exclusion? I think I answered that. Um, 